China completes a full high-speed train in 12 hours with just 30 workers. To put this in perspective, traditional rail manufacturing powerhouses like Japan and Germany require weeks and hundreds of personnel to accomplish the same task. This isn't propaganda. It's documented manufacturing reality that's reshaping global transportation economics. 25 years ago, China's railway system was suffocating under the weight of 1.4 billion people and crumbling infrastructure. Trains crawled across vast distances at speeds that belonged to another century. Cities remained isolated. Economic potential went unrealized. The nation faced a critical choice. Accept transportation paralysis or engineer a solution that seemed impossible. They chose the impossible. By the end of 2023, China operated 159,000 kilometers of railway track. Within that network, 45,000 kilometers consisted of high-speed rail, more than the rest of the world combined. This isn't incremental progress. This represents the largest infrastructure transformation in human history, executed in roughly two decades. The numbers tell only part of the story. Behind these statistics lies a manufacturing revolution that Western rail industries are scrambling to understand. Inside facilities operated by CRRC, the China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation, automated assembly lines produce complete high-speed trains in half a day. Each train contains 550,000 precision-engineered components. Each component must integrate flawlessly with systems managing speeds exceeding 350 kilometers per hour. Traditional manufacturing wisdom says this level of complexity demands extensive human labor and extended timelines. CRRC's facilities prove otherwise. The company emerged in 2015 from a merger of China's two largest rail manufacturers. Despite its relatively recent formation, CRRC now commands 53% of the global rail transit equipment market. France's Alstom, Canada's Bombardier, and Germany's Siemens, companies with century-long legacies, split the remaining market share. Together, these four corporations control approximately 82% of worldwide rail manufacturing. CRRC's dominance stems from a fundamental reimagining of train production. Where competitors relied on traditional assembly methods refined over decades, Chinese engineers designed production systems from scratch, incorporating automation technologies that didn't exist when European and Japanese rail industries matured. Consider the traditional approach. Teams of specialized workers hand install components across weeks of assembly. Quality depends on human precision. Speed is limited by physical capability and attention span. Scaling production requires proportionally expanding workforce and facilities. CRRC's facilities operate differently. Robotic arms guided by precision algorithms position components with sub-millimeter accuracy. Computer vision systems inspect welds and connections faster than human eyes can focus. Automated logistics deliver exactly the right part to exactly the right station at exactly the right moment. The 30 human workers don't assemble the train. They supervise machines that assemble the train. This automation delivers speed, but speed alone doesn't explain China's rail transformation. The real breakthrough lies in how manufacturing efficiency connects to network expansion. Traditional high-speed rail development followed a predictable pattern plan a route, secure funding, construct infrastructure, order trains, wait for delivery, and then finally begin operations. This sequential process meant there were often years between conception and actual service. But in China, they compressed these timelines by producing trains in parallel with track construction, making sure rolling stock availability matched network expansion. This strategy required, honestly, an unprecedented level of manufacturing capacity. Between 2008 and 2023, China built more high-speed rail than the world had constructed in the previous four decades. This kind of pace demanded train production at scales no manufacturer had ever sustained before. CRRC's automated facilities made this possible, churning out trains faster than tracks could even be laid. In October 2020, CRRC opened its facilities to international media for the very first time.
Journalists from 52 countries, including BBC correspondents and reporters from major European and Asian outlets, witnessed the production process firsthand. They watched as assembly line robots lifted entire carriage sections, positioned them with precision, and welded joints while automated quality systems verified every connection. One reporter later described the experience as watching the future being mass-produced. Another noted the eerie quiet, where traditional train factories echo with hammering and shouting. CRRC's facilities hum with electric motors and hydraulic systems. The 30 human workers moved between stations, checking digital readouts and authorizing production stages, but rarely touching the trains themselves. The implications here extend well beyond just manufacturing. When China initiated the Belt and Road Initiative, a trillion-dollar infrastructure program connecting Asia, Europe, and Africa, high-speed rail became a cornerstone offering. Chinese firms could promise not just technology transfer, but complete systems. Track design, station construction, train delivery, operator training, and maintenance support. The 12-hour production capability meant delivery timelines that competitors simply couldn't match. Indonesia's Jakarta Bandung line, completed in 2023, really exemplifies this integrated approach. Chinese contractors delivered infrastructure and rolling stock simultaneously, compressing project timelines that would have stretched across decades under traditional procurement models. Thailand, Laos, Malaysia, and numerous other nations have signed similar agreements, betting that Chinese rail efficiency translates to faster economic development. This expansion, of course, triggers geopolitical ripples. Europe and Japan, watching their historical rail dominance erode, face some uncomfortable questions about industrial competitiveness. How does a century-old company compete with rivals that manufacture trains four times faster? How do established technologies compete with systems designed for automation from the very beginning? Japan's response really reveals the depth of this challenge. In 2019, Japanese media outlets sent investigation teams to CRRC facilities, skeptical of claims about 12-hour assembly times. They documented the process, interviewed engineers, and returned home with conclusions their audience found difficult to accept. China had genuinely surpassed Japan's famed Shinkansen system in manufacturing efficiency and, increasingly, in technological sophistication. The admission, honestly, stung. Japan introduced high-speed rail to the world in 1964 with the original Shinkansen line between Tokyo and Osaka. For decades, Japanese engineering set global standards. Chinese officials studied Japanese systems extensively when planning their own network, even licensing early Shinkansen technology. The student had become the master, not through incremental improvement, but through fundamental reinvention of manufacturing processes. European manufacturers face similar reckonings. Siemens and Alstom produce exceptional trains, but their factories reflect manufacturing philosophies developed when labor was cheap and automation limited. Retrofitting these facilities for robotic assembly requires massive capital investment and, really, a cultural transformation within organizations structured around traditional craftsmanship. Meanwhile, CRRC continues expanding. The company has delivered approximately 4,000 high-speed trains globally and established what industry analysts call the world's largest mass production system for rail vehicles. Their facilities span multiple Chinese cities, each specializing in different train types, sleek intercity expresses, rugged freight haulers, and urban metro cars. The Chicago Transit Authority's 2016 contract with CRRC illustrates the company's growing American presence. The deal called for 846 subway cars manufactured at a new CRRC facility in Chicago, marking the first Chinese-owned rail manufacturing plant in the United States. The project faced political headwinds, concerns about Chinese government influence and American job displacement, but economic logic prevailed. CRRC's bid significantly undercut domestic competitors, and the company committed to American manufacturing jobs. 
Rio de Janeiro's Metro Line 4 tells a similar story. For the 2016 Olympics, Brazilian authorities needed rapid transit expansion on tight timelines and constrained budgets. CRRC delivered 90 subway vehicles, manufactured in China and shipped to Brazil, meeting aggressive deadlines that traditional suppliers couldn't accommodate. The trains performed flawlessly during the games, cementing CRRC's reputation in South American markets. These international projects reveal a strategic pattern. CRRC uses superior manufacturing efficiency to undercut competitors on price while meeting aggressive delivery schedules. Once established in a market, the company leverages local manufacturing partnerships to address political concerns about foreign competition. The strategy transforms China's domestic manufacturing advantage into global market share. Critics argue that government subsidies, rather than genuine efficiency, enable CRRC's competitive pricing. Chinese state support for strategic industries is well documented, and CRRC certainly benefits from favorable financing and policy support. However, dismissing the company's achievements as purely subsidy-driven ignores the technological reality visible in their factories. The robots are real. The automation is genuine. The 12-hour assembly time isn't accounting fiction. It's observable manufacturing fact. The question facing global rail industries isn't whether Chinese efficiency is legitimate, but how to respond. Some Western manufacturers are investing heavily in automation, attempting to match Chinese production speeds. Others focus on high-value niche markets where customization and specialized engineering justify premium pricing. A few lobby for protectionist policies, arguing that national security concerns warrant excluding Chinese competitors from domestic projects. None of these responses addresses the fundamental challenge. China transformed train manufacturing from a labor-intensive craft into an automated industrial process. This transformation isn't reversible through tariffs or market protection. It represents a permanent shift in global manufacturing capacity. The broader implications extend beyond trains. China's approach to high-speed rail, massive state investment, technology absorption, indigenous innovation, automated manufacturing, and aggressive global expansion serves as a template applied across industries. Electric vehicles, solar panels, semiconductors, telecommunications equipment. The pattern repeats with variations but consistent underlying logic. Western policymakers increasingly recognize they're not competing with individual Chinese companies, but with a coordinated industrial strategy that leverages state resources, manufacturing scale, and technological ambition. High-speed rail offers the clearest example because the results are impossible to obscure. You can debate semiconductor capabilities or electric vehicle quality, but you can't argue with trains that actually run at 350 kilometers per hour, manufactured in facilities that produce complete units every 12 hours. For passengers, these geopolitical tensions remain largely invisible. Chinese high-speed trains offer comfortable, punctual, affordable travel across distances that once required hours of highway driving or expensive flights. A journey from Beijing to Shanghai, over 1,300 kilometers, takes four and a half hours on the newest trains, with tickets costing roughly $80 for second-class seats. The trains depart every few minutes during peak hours, carrying over 1,000 passengers each. This operational reality transformed Chinese society in ways that pure statistics struggle to capture. Cities once separated by overnight train journeys now sit within easy commuting distance. Economic opportunities once concentrated in coastal megacities now spread to inland provincial capitals connected by high-speed rail. Labor markets integrate across previously isolated regions. Tourism flourishes as weekend trips become feasible across vast distances. The environmental implications deserve consideration too. Each high-speed train removes hundreds of car trips or dozens of domestic flights from China's transportation network. As the system expands, the aggregate carbon impact becomes substantial. China's trains run primarily on electricity generated from coal, limiting environmental benefits. 
but the shift toward renewable energy gradually improves the equation. Critics of China's development model point to massive debt accumulation and questionable economic returns from some rail lines serving sparsely populated regions. These concerns have merit. Several high-speed routes operate at losses, subsidized by profits from heavily traveled corridors. Whether this cross-subsidization represents sound long-term planning or politically motivated overbuilding remains debated among economists. What's indisputable is the manufacturing capability that makes this network possible. You cannot build 45,000 kilometers of high-speed rail without solving the train production challenge. China solved it by reimagining the entire manufacturing process, creating facilities that produce in hours what previously required weeks. International visitors to China often express surprise at the gap between their expectations and observed reality. Western media coverage of China tends toward two extremes, breathless cheerleading or apocalyptic criticism. Both miss nuanced truths visible to anyone spending time in major Chinese cities. The high-speed rail network represents this complexity, a genuine technological achievement with legitimate questions about economic sustainability and geopolitical implications. The 12-hour train production timeline symbolizes a larger transformation. China isn't simply copying Western technology or competing through low labor costs anymore. In advanced manufacturing domains like high-speed rail, Chinese companies now define global benchmarks for efficiency and scale. Whether this leadership proves sustainable depends on factors beyond pure manufacturing capability, innovation capacity, market adaptability, geopolitical stability, but the current reality is undeniable. For global rail industries, the CRRC phenomenon poses existential questions. Can traditional manufacturers survive against competitors that produce trains four times faster? Do government subsidies and market protection offer viable long-term strategies? Will automation eventually level the playing field? Or has China's head start created insurmountable advantages? These questions lack clear answers, but the trajectory seems obvious. Chinese high-speed rail continues expanding domestically and internationally. CRRC's production capacity keeps growing. Automation technologies advance. The 12-hour assembly time that shocked observers in 2020 may soon seem quaint compared to future capabilities. The story of how China builds high-speed trains in 12 hours is ultimately about more than trains. It's about industrial transformation, technological ambition, and the shifting balance of global manufacturing power. It demonstrates what becomes possible when state resources, engineering talent, and market scale align toward clearly defined objectives. Whether this model proves sustainable or optimal remains uncertain. What's certain is that it's changing the world's transportation infrastructure and forcing every other rail manufacturer to reconsider assumptions that shape their industries for generations.